I'd imagine working in the, in the industry you're working on, it's also looking for customers that are going to challenge your thinking as well. From like inception to the, to your company to getting onto the sales circuit to start road showing what you have, can you w walk me through that process of what that looks like and how you started to get traction and you I mean, guess maybe what the time horizon was? Yeah. Sure. So not what it looks like, but what it looked like, I guess, I mean, if, from from the moment we yeah, decided that we were going to have a company and build a proof of concept and then find customers. Is that sort of the journey you're describing? Yeah. Yeah. What would that look like? Uh, walk me through the story. Because, you know, yeah, it starts off in the three person conference room. How do you, yeah, like, how did you translate that into your initial, like, sales motions to start rolling this out? Yeah. yeah. So, what's interesting is that we were founded by two people with a product background. Myself and the CEO both came from some product minded things. Obviously, I came from a technical background and a design background. And our third partner is our COO and CMO. So not really a sales, a traditional salesperson in the mix. And, but as found, that's constantly part of your journey is how do you explain what you do to other folks so that they find it compelling. We could not go to just find a corporate who's going to use our product. We had to find a bank who's going to, you know, we were going to partner with and whose cards we were going to use to, to have a product. So we originally, I sketched together some fake screens that were like a click through prototype on a mobile device. And our CEO went to money 2020, which is a huge payments conference in Vegas every year. And he talked to folks he knew and folks he didn't know to say, here, we're thinking about this sort of thing. And I still, we still have those screens there. Um, as you would hope, they are quite embarrassing to look at, <laughs> but we take them out every couple of years to laugh at ourselves. You also can't succeed if you can't laugh at yourself. And we eventually found a bank that was willing to say, hey, we have some APIs. Um, if you open your own account, you can plug into our APIs and you can give it a whirl. Right? You're only messing with your money, so have at it, right? your own credit card. And so we did that and we, I got to working with the person who now is our, our first hire, but he wasn't a full-time hire then. And we built together a mobile app. First, and we were only mobile at first. There's not even a website that you could do, a web application you could do this through. And so we were an iOS app where you could send other people cards. And we showed that to other banks. We showed that to potential customers. We showed that to people we knew in the startup space or anyone who might be interested in helping us out. Um, I scraped together a few people who potentially already had an account at this bank, Silicon Valley Bank, who, who let us get started um, and continue to talk to investors because we recognized this was not something that we could fund out of our own pockets and our, our first investor who agreed to join uh, point 72 had we sent them a card and we then we went to a meeting with them and they came back and said we, we were we were at home depot and we bought some screws or something with this credit card and we're like it works I'm like yeah we know we built it we had confidence in that um, and then that just started it starts to accelerate from there because then you can start to build a team you can bring on people who know sales better than you and who know other things better than you and just continue talking, especially with banks, selling to banks, just continue those conversations, getting your name out there. Um, because it's been a long, our partnerships with these big banks take a very long time to close. And so it's just building those personal relationships, showing that we were trustworthy, showing that when we said we were going to do something, we did it. Showing that our product did something better than the products they had already offering. Showing that we were thinking about the problem in a different way. And then it's just speaking to enough people that it starts to become self-evident to the people who want to buy, who want to partner with you and go from there. But it certainly, in the beginning, there was a lot of relationship building with um, card networks because that's really where the source of our virtual cards are and letting them trust three guys in a conference room, a team of 10, however you name it, to give us access to these massively powerful APIs so that we can build our product. Uh, and so that, and then spend the time building a product based on those APIs that, you know, some of them are older, some are a little bit creakier. They're not purpose-built for this. How can we build, effectively what we built is a layer around all of that that then enables both our product and other products we built on top of it. And so that journey continues today, continue to sign more banks, continue to grow our product. But I'd say the first beginning of it was an 18 to 24 month process of really feeling like, is this actually going to be a thing? So like 24 months to 
start to get the first sign-ons of banks. Sign on banks and finding end corporates who want to who want to sign on and use this, right? Because a bank then says to its corporates, "Hey, we've got this new thing, we got this new product, this new feature on your card. Let's give it a shot." Because the way we make money uh, is the more credit card transaction volume goes through, we make a piece of that. So we just need people charging charging money on our virtual cards to have the bank pay us money because we've now enabled more people to use their cards than used before. Um, and so, and then, you know, we originally thought that this was going to be a, what's called a T&E type product, right? So imagine one of my employees doesn't have a credit card to make business for travel. I would give them a card. They could buy their airplane. They could buy their, go to a conference, right? They could buy their hotel, their conference entrance fee, all of that, and not have to get reimbursed. That was kind of the initial vision. And then of course COVID hit and no one's leaving their house going to any conferences. And we discovered actually lots of businesses want the trackability and reconciliation that virtual cards offer. And so you would use this to manage their spend at their business amongst that many other things. And so it didn't have to be travel. And so again, you have to be open-minded and see this happening, looking carefully at the number. Oh, I see what's happening. I'm, I read the tea leaves. How can we continue to make a product that supports that type of use? How can we change our stories so that when we're talking to banks, they understand where we're seeing success. And, and now today we know there are many billions of dollars of charge line that flow through our system, but it's, it all started from that first, it started from a first $10 charge at a coffee shop for the three of us to go to many billions. It's, a, it's been an exciting journey for that. It almost didn't sound like sales or marketing. It was just socializing the idea for a couple of years. And a quote that helped me understand marketing a little bit better is that the market is a place you go to market. Like you actually physically, or I guess physically go to the Facebook page, right? But like you went to the conference and you weren't selling anything. Yeah, did technically had nothing to sell. You just had an idea and you just started socializing it and just kept like working the process of just getting your name out there. And that's literally like what going to market is. That is what marketing is. <laughs> You're socializing, but you didn't wait until you had an actual like minimum viable commercializable product. You actually just had this prototype and you're like, okay, cool. Let's go find out if people. Well, yeah, yeah. exactly. Let's find out. Do people, are people interested in this? What resonates has to be, that's the design process right there. You, you can, mm -hmm. I mean, even if we slap something together in a few weeks, that, that's a waste of time if no one wants that. Right. So how can we show things to people, get their feedback? and then go from there.